Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and yes, it became a series. We started talking about the uh, Gladiator vs Centurion, then we started talking about Centurion vs Legionary and today we are considering this hypothetical duel in this, um, we could call it alternative or alternate reality uh, of a Samurai versus a Roman Legionary. Who would win? Now the reason why I'm talking about this is because I noticed that you enjoyed it and at the, f at the end of the day, I mean, my channel is here for you, so depending on how many people ask me to talk about something, uh, I will. And it's not just a matter of the number of people asking me to do that, uh, because it, even if just one person asks me to talk about a specific topic, but I find it to be a very interesting, I will talk about it anyway. So let me know, always in the comments below, uh, what you would like me to talk about, because if I find it to be something that I either know or something that could be interesting to talk about and I find it to be pertinent to this channel, I will. Also, before starting, I'd like to mention one video that you should definitely check. Um, Scalagrim and I have recently become Lego character, apparently, and something really curious happened when I mentioned the word katana to the man. If you're curious, link in the description below. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to say is that when I read people talk, talking about these things, the first thing that, that I notice is the fact that they, 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 they always say something like this. For example, the, the samurai supporters, they say, yeah, but the samurai will destroy the Roman because he's a mounted archer, and so he's, he will shoot the Roman on, from, from top of his horse and kill him before he can even get close. <laughs> That's an interesting thing because if you think about it, it's a very specific situation. It's like things are gonna go this way. No space for anything anything else. I think that it would be much more interesting to imagine a actual duel, one against one, with neither of the two uh, being mounted. A sort of an arena situation, and the reason for that is because if we consider a Roman who is, you know, running with his scutum and etc. Et towards a samurai, and the samurai is on horseback, what the heck is a Roman doing? Why is he trying to chase someone on horseback? He wouldn't even do it. It'd be like, okay, you're on horseback, goodbye, and you can have this piece of land. I'll come back when you sleep. So that situation is so specific that then we could even say something on the lines of, well, while the samurai is scouting the area, the Roman is, is, is able to do an ambush and then attack him from the back. You know, it's, it's too specific. So I think it would be better to consider a duel. Now, even in a duel, of course, we need to choose the sort of weapons that these warriors are using. And yes, it's not right to remove the bow from the samurai because that's his main weapon, at least. Of course, we are not considering 16th century, otherwise we would have to have the samurai using a Tanegashima Teppo matchlock type arquebus, in which case gun against a Roman, you know, there is no even, there is no point in even considering this, it's too much of a technological gap, the Roman would have no chance. So let's give the bow to the samurai. How easily, how easy would it be for a samurai in an enclosed area such as an arena, um, let's consider the Colosseum, to shoot the legionary coming towards him? Well, that's a difficult question because first off we would have to know how effective the Yumi bow uh, would be and the sort of ya or arrows that, that samurai were using at least up to the 14th century to just choose a date, uh, used against the Roman, against the uh, armor that a Roman is wearing. Because remember, uh, whether it be Lorica Hamata or whether it be Lorica Segmentata, if we're talking Segmentata then we're talking about plates and remember the plates we're talking about, yes it's Iron Age but it's steel. <laughs> That's important. I got a whole video on this uh, iron or steel both for both the Samurai and the Roman. I think the, those two videos are really good because they're full of details. I don't always think that my videos are really good but I think these two are. So if you have missed them, I, they were uploaded during uh, when, I, when I was doing daily uploads. So you might have missed them. Link in the description below. So they're really worth it. Lots of information and I've got good sources as well that you can read for yourself. Um, but let's just remember, it was steel um, and if it w the Gladius was made of steel and the Lorica was often made of sandwiched plates uh, of both steel and iron, which is basically a, a, similar th a similar thing happened for the Samurai as well. 
So, um, although only the wealthy uh, samurai would have steel on the on the armor, or at least in the most important parts. But having said this, you know, can the Yumi bow pierce steel armor? And even if we are not talking uh, segmentata, and we are talking, uh, for example, hamata, well, we are talking about half riveted, half solid rings. So it's very sturdy armor, and underneath you have got the subarmalis or toragomachus to use the actual word uh, which is padding padded armor and in the case of lorica hamata it's fully padded in the case of lorica segmentata you mostly pad the shoulders you do have a little bit of padding but not that much so um in both situations um i don't see it to be that easy to pierce it with a yumi bow but even if okay we could test this eventually one day on this channel we just get that perfect armor we get a perfect yumi bow you get someone who knows how to shoot that and he shoots at the armor and we see if it actually pierces or not even if it goes through and we're like wow the yumi bow is a lot more powerful than we thought even if that was if that were the case and i doubt but even if it were the case there still is the scutum the romans had a lot of defense two lines okay so it's not easy. The scutum is massive. So even if the legion is running towards you with the scutum and you start shooting like crazy, um, you need to go through the scutum. And, and even if the arrow penetrates the scutum, I imagine it would, uh, probably wouldn't go through, I don't think. But even if it did, uh, still the fact that it's going through the scutum, it's already removing part of the force. The force is dissipating already. So by the time it reaches the armor, it will not pierce. Um, so you will have a few holes and a few arrows sticking on, on the scutum but I, I do not I think it's impossible to have one arrow of a Yumi bow go through both the scutum the armor of the guy the padding underneath and the guy himself okay and, and go deep enough to kill him uh, or to incapacitate him fantasy so uh, not that easy to shoot him down uh, unless you, he's like he got a lucky shot like you know gets him in the eye and uh, yeah, that, that's over of course but that could happen I'm not saying it couldn't but I'm saying not that easy like some people say like I'll just shoot the Roman not that simple the Romans were excellent units against um, sort of arrows and ranged weapons they were designed for that hence the development of the studo and other techniques like, such, such as that Okay, this is all impressive. So let's say that the samurai, just, just for sake of entertainment, let's say the samurai did not get a lucky shot and didn't manage to shoot the Roman down. So now they've got hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Roman is using a gladius, the samurai is using what? A katana? Possibly not. Let's say that he's using a yari or a naginata. And yari, if we want to follow the advice of Miyamoto Musashi, who says that yari are better than naginata. So, um, the first thing we see is that, of course, the samurai has got a range advantage. And a range advantage is an important advantage. So, of course, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, because of that situation, I would give a little bit of an advantage to the samurai. So, the, uh, having a range advantage is an important thing, but the Romans knew how to close in the ranks. It was what they did. Even if an opponent had a range advantage, the scutum is there to minimize this, this advantage. And once you get to hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Roman is, is, is a master of that. Um, but can the Roman pierce samurai armor with his gladius? I doubt it. So the Roman would need to either manage to pierce through the armpit or pierce through the, the throat. Probably not an easy thing to do. So I would imagine that compared to this, the kind of warriors that most Romans had to face in reality, probably facing a samurai in hand-to-hand -hand combat would be problematic. But having said this, it will all depend on the skill of every single warrior, a single warrior. You can have an incredibly skilled samurai fighting a legionary who's not as good and therefore the samurai will win eventually because the legionary can't manage to pierce properly, the samurai is used to parrying and he manages to stick the, yari, the point of the yari into the throat of the legionary and bye bye and say goodbye to Roma Caput Mundi. But if we get a very experienced veteran of fighting, a really good legionary, he's strong, he's fast, he's quick and precise and he knows how to use the def the extra defense he has because of the scutum compared to the samurai and the samurai is confused by that because normally he's not used to fighting against people using that sort of massive shields and he just can't get past and eventually the roman manages to get him in that area where he has no armor and he goes down they are both these are both possible uh, situations and particularly if we talk about um Samurai of Heian period or Samurai of even uh, earlier, the very early Samurai and then a duel in one-on-one, -on -one, I think it would be a very much a situation of um, 
who is the superior fighter. Uh, we need to get all the way up to the 16th century and the samurai using gunpowder to say no, the, the Roman doesn't stand a chance. Uh, you need that level of technological advance. Um, of course, when talking pitched battle and actual formation, there will be a completely different situation, so I might make an actual video on that, comparing uh, samurai battle warfare and Roman battle warfare and see who would have won in this hypothetical re uh, alternative reality. But for the duel, I think that the samurai has a slight advantage, but the Roman is not an easy target because of the shield he has. Now, since this is a very interesting topic, I think I will make a sparring session. I'm organizing it, I'm planning it, and we will test this out. We will have a guy in Roman set, I have a Roman set, uh, two actually, and a guy in Samurai set, and we will try a few duels and we will see what happens, and you, we will be able to test some of these theories. Of course, we are not real Samurais and we are not real Romans, but still, it's, I think some things, we could still learn something from these sparring sections. So if you like this idea, let me know in the comments below because if I see a lot of people then I might speed it up and get all my friends together, film it and make some sparring sessions. You see, at the end of the day, although I'm a big supporter of academic studies, um, also experiential knowledge is very important. And even, again, we, we are not real samurai, we're not real Romans, but there are some things that you can only learn when you do them. And that's why I strongly, I highly value uh, historical reenactment, and I think it should be used uh, in school to have people understand what it meant to walk wearing a certain kind of clothing or wearing a, wearing a certain kind of armor. I think it would make things, information stick into the minds of the youth. I always try to push it at school, but you know, up, up to now I haven't been very lucky. People are very, you know, traditional on these things. But unfortunately, uh, you know, no norm, secular knowledge, you just tell the dates and the students forget them after a couple of years, sometimes even a couple of weeks. But if they live a, a battle, for example, the Battle of Hastings, and they reenact it, I think they will never forget that 1066 they have experienced themselves. All right, number ones, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Remember, these uh, sort of videos, these versus videos, are not just videos for me to impart my knowledge and whatever. Absolutely not. Uh, please remember, I don't and know the whole truth. These are just my opinions, but of course these are just here to have a conversation, stimulate discussion and hear your opinion. So you are as much a part of this topic and this video as I am. I'll be looking forward to reading your opinions in the comments below. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.